What's up guys, Nightingale here, and welcome back to a developer's notice. Today we're going to be covering the 8-4, so August 4th, uh, balance adjustment preview. It happens about every eight weeks, and here we go. Finally, uh, some units are getting some love, and kind of actually kind of some interesting choices. So go ahead and say hello to um, YouTube. We're here live on Twitch, so Twitch chat, say hello to YouTube. Uh, YouTube, feel free to come hang out here live on Twitch. We do this uh, anytime there's a update notice or a developer notice. We try to do them live on stream. Um, so to help you guys navigate the video a little bit better, make sure you do check out the uh, description below as there will be timestamps linked to each one of the major things that we're going to be talking about. So all the heroes will have their own timestamp as well as artifacts. Uh, at the end of the video, we'll have the uh, question and answers from live here on Twitch. And if they you don't happen to have your question answered, YouTube, uh, feel free to leave your uh, com leave a comment with your questions and I'll try to answer them as best as possible and uh, let's see if uh, Twitch chat can do their job and get the questions answered for you so that you can just sit back and relax but we're gonna go ahead and jump on into this so hello heirs this is epic 7 hi epic 7 I had no clue this was epic 7 we would like to sincerely thank all of our heirs for their consistent, uh, consistent support and love for Epic Seven. With the balance adjustments, we plan to improve, uh, or plan to implement nine uh, changes to nine heroes, including one specialty change hero and two artifacts. The changes are uh, scheduled to take place, or scheduled to take effect following the eight four update. The target, the balance adjustment targets. With the balance adjustments, certain heroes and artifacts will have ha that have been absent in the current meta will be adjusted, and uh, the details of the balance adjustment for the selected heroes and artifacts are as follows. So the you know um, the thing they said would never they were going to stop doing you know buffing ML fives. Well, they're still buffing ML fives to this day. So we just kind of accept that they lied to us in that notice, and uh, yeah, we're getting ML5 buffs. Cool. But honestly, though, this is a unit that does quite deserve a buff. Faithless Lydica is finally getting some love. As I told you guys over the last, like, three, four weeks, talking about Holiday Euphine, and is she going to get rerun, here's your answer. She's getting a buff, which means she's about to be rerun in a few weeks. I keep telling you guys this. If it's here, it's going to get rerun. They're going to all be rerun. All right, so Holiday Euphine is getting a rerun. Uh, Urvalen is getting a uh, uh, some changes. We've got Senya getting some changes. Great Chief Kawaii, I mean Kawana, is getting uh, some changes. We've got Rickerus and his specialty change getting a update. Uh, Yoon Ri Young, I think is how you say her name. She's getting some love and attention. And same with Aroel. Who even uses those units? Our artifacts today is not the prayer beads. Again, the worst artifact in the game, according to that survey that they so proudly put out in front of us, still hasn't been touched. Literally almost two to one voted that artifact needing changes. Here we are, months later, it still isn't here. But, Alencia Knox Wrath, Alencia Knox's Wrath is getting a, um, is getting some changes, and Double Edge, just, uh, Crescent? Yeah, that's actually blurry for me. Uh, we may have to blow this up. Okay, so, let's jump on into this and start with the ML5. So, Faithless Lytica, um... Her new changes is for her uh, uh, Larkspur, uh, which is after Awakened, will is getting damage damage dealt increased. It's now binds all enemies with a sword with a 100% chance to dispel one buff, and a critical hit will dispel one additional buff. Increases combat readiness of the caster by 25% per target. The skill cannot trigger a counterattack. And this is uh, doing in or this no that was the increased damage from that, so they are removing their increases the oh so they're just saying straight up they're giving it another uh, dispel. Well here we go again they're devaluing buffs but okay this was kind of her job to begin with so a uh, little weird I'll allow it uh, and then uh, combat readiness in five percent per allies or per other ally. 
all other allies by 5% per target. Oh, so it initially... See okay, I see what it says. All right, so now Hysteria, after. So, attacks the enemy with a uh, indiscriminately increasing skill cooldowns to max. Increases combat readiness of all allies by 25%. A critical hit grants a ally skill nullifier once, uh, negating damage received from the uh, next skill attack. Cool. So, Faithless Lytic has always kind of been an opener from what I've understood. I've never, I don't have the unit. I never played it, and I'm going to be honest, I think I've seen maybe two Faithless Liticas ever. And that was some weird tech Faithlesses, from what I remember when people were doing mock battles with me. So as far as this unit's concerned, this thing has been non-existent. It was not even in the game as far as I'm concerned. I knew she got a skin, but I hadn't seen her. So will this change? What's going to go on? I don't know. Let's see what they end up saying. So Faithless uh, Lytica's skill, Luxbar, has been uh, used to dispel the enemy's buff and quickly use Hysteria to take advantage of take advantage in early battle. However, she was neutralized if she did not get the desired result from her first attack. Uh, with these balance adjustments, the skill effect of increasing allies' combat readiness uh, in her Luxbar Awakened will be transferred to the skill Hysteria, and the amount of combat or the amount of increased combat readiness will be slightly increased by a fixed value. In addition, Luxbar Awakened will now dispel one additional buff with a critical hit, and damage dealt is also increased. Uh, we expect to improve her utility through these adjustments as she can choose to uh, use either Luxbar or Hysteria depending on the battle situation. So, yeah, she's gonna have a, she's gonna have a choice. For those who have her, it's gonna be interesting. I don't know if this will change, uh, I don't know if this will change anything because there's already so many other people that seem to do that dispel job better than her. But we'll see, what's up? So, let's move on to Holiday Euphine. Good, this is something I've been, I've been, I was hoping for just to see some tweaks to maybe make her a little more utility. So let's jump in and see what's up with her new adjustment. She also got a balance, she also was adjusted last summer. And while it was a good step forward, a lot of us then even thought it wasn't good enough. So let's see if this year's version is good enough. While she's never been bad, like truly bad, she's been very niche. And that's what we're trying to, that's what I was hoping for her is that this, hopefully this moves her away from being insanely niche to being usable. You can take her places and actually get some value out of it. So... Damage dealt increased off just one bite. So let's eat together after the buff. Is um, Reduces the effect of decreased combat readiness debuffs inflicted by, on all allies by 50%. This does not stack with other passives of the same skill. She now has increased evasion by 35%. And then increases evasion um, by an additional 35% when the caster is at max health. Okay, so 70%. So what they're doing now is they're balancing it out from the 20 to 50. So she's now, it's a little more balanced. Just she's got a little more evasion overall. And now she's got, she, she still has the same evasion number at the start. It's just now it's a little more uh, distributed better. Cool. Uh, will this fix it? Don't know. This will probably take testing, in my opinion. All right, you fiends star special. I assume is what that is for. You fiends special. Uh, we're gonna go straight to the Awakened, because nobody cares about the non-Awakened skill. Um, dispels two buffs from all allies, attacks the enemy in the middle of a night market, increasing attack of all allies for two turns, and combat readiness by 20%. So it's a CR push and an attack buff now for her opening ability. Cool. Uh, so this is getting rid of greater, greater, increased greater attack, which is, okay, did she need Gab? No. It was cool, but did she need it? No. Um, honestly, if they really ever wanted to do it, they could put it in an exclusive equipment. Don't hate me if they ever do it. But they could get it back to her, uh, her in an exclusive equipment someday. So, Holiday Euphine has been used to dispel debuffs and increase combat readiness of the allies with her skill. Holiday's star special has... After taking damage in the early stages of battle... How, uh, Euphine special. After taking damage in early stages of the battle, however, her contribution 
in battle after early stages are has been limited to increase supporting uh, abilities through the entire battle we've adjusted the skills as follows her skill uh, changes now. She's now granting the attack buff for two turns. Since the increased greater attack uh, is changed to increased attack, her damage dealt for just one bite has been slightly increased to uh, compensate the change. Cool. That makes sense. Uh, the increased evasion effect let's eat together is the same overall, but the will be increased when she has less health, less than maximum health. Again, good, because this was kind of the weird thing. It was really good that she had all this evasion at the first part, but you had to keep her at max health in order to keep the evasion rate up. Um, through these changes, Hall of Day Euphine will be able to support allies uh, better and continue to contribute through throughout the battle. Is this going to be enough? I don't know. Um, I like the fact that she now is an attack buffer. That's cool. Um, I like the fact that, um, uh, they've balanced out the evasion. That seems a little more fair because I mean, th when they mean max health, they literally mean if it's 1000 health at 999 health, she lost the 35 evasion, which is a little weird. Cause I mean, it's, it's literally just to stop an opener damaging. So, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll go with, this is a little bit better. All right. Next up is Urvalen. Now, this one kind of came out of nowhere. I'm going to be honest, but let's see what happens. So, Vengeance is now getting a, uh, is getting his soul burn. So, now increased effect chance by 100%. So, rapidly attacks the enemy with a 50% chance to decrease defense for two turns. Now, it's a 100% chance for a 10 soul burn. Gross. All right. Uh, let's see here. Sword of Hatred. Attacks the enemy repeatedly when the target is an elite or boss monster. Grants an extra turn to the caster. Damage dealt is now in, uh, is now decreased. Okay, and its skill cooldown is now four turns versus two. So they're full reworking this skill. Um, which is when the enemy's max health is greater than the caster's health, the combat readiness of the caster increases proportional to the difference up to a maximum of 30%. Hey, you know, I'm going to be honest, I've never really read Urvalen skills until now. Um, so a PvE unit. Cool. Oh, wait, it's there's an awakening. Uh, create, oh, wait, so after attacks, uh, and attacks the enemy, attacks the caster... Increases the attack of the caster for two turns. When the target is an elite or boss monster, grants an extra turn. Okay, so he grants himself an attack buff. Cool. All right, heir to the throne. So let's see here. Attacks the enemy with a sword, granting increased speed and barrier to the caster for two turns. When the enemy's max health is greater than the caster's max HP, damage dealt increased proportional to the difference, up to a maximum of 60%. Barrier strength increases proportional to the caster's attack. When the enemy's max H health is greater than the caster's max, the damage dealt is increased proportional to the difference, up to a maximum. Okay. And they're decreasing the damage, but they're also giving an increased speed buff. But they're, re they're removing a good chunk of this skill. So they're removing the counterattacking stance, uh, barrier for two turns. Yeah, they've literally made him, they've stripped the PvP value out of him. Okay. I'm all right with this. Uh, frees up some stuff and allows you to do some uh, things with PvE with Urvalen. Cool. Uh, Urvalen was originally designed to deal high damage to enemies whose max health were greater than his. However, he lacked any dis uh, distinguishing strengths compared to the other heroes. Therefore, adjustments will be made so that he can play a more active role and aggressive role against more powerful enemies such as Elite and Bond Monsters. His skill, Sword of Hatred, is changed to grant an extra turn uh, when the target is an elite or a boss monster, allowing him to use the skill Heir to the Throne right after. Uh, his AI has also been changed to prioritize the skill, Sword of Hatred, first in auto battle. 
the skill increase uh, will increase the attack and speed of the caster instead of granting immunity and adopting the counterattack stance accordingly. His soul burn has been changed to effectiveness of his skill. Vengeance decreases enemies' defense more efficiently. As his utility will increase with these adjustments, uh, each of his skills now have decreased damage and cooldowns for Sword of Hatred increased by four turns. So, I'm sure there's going to be a few people out there that are bummed that he's losing his PvP value, but um, this could be very good for a lot of players who happen to pull him, and it's that are earlier game that don't necessarily need the PvP units right now. This could help them with some things, because this is pretty cool. So, and that's pretty neat, too. The fact that they're giving it extra damage to elites and boss monsters. Nice. Now this one, I'm going to be 100% honest with you. I was not expecting Senya. I thought Senya was in a pretty good spot. But, they thought otherwise. And let's see what the changes really are. So now her Indomitable Spirit, after the buff, will increase it, increase his attack by... Okay, so this is the passive. So increases attack by 30% and critical resistance by 50%. When attacking, cannot trigger a critical hit. And when attacked, if the caster suffers a non-critical hit... Uh, Deals damage to the attacker proportional to the caster's attack before Grace of the Battlefield. Or before activating Grace of the Battlefield. Grace of the Battlefield can only be activated once every two turns. Grace of the Battlefield now grants a barrier to all allies for two turns. Increases the speed of the caster and barrier strength increases proportional to the caster's attack. So that's going to be interesting to see because Senyuk is definitely a unit that can easily achieve very, very, very high attack depending on how you build her. Uh, to give you guys perspective, I can get a Senya with 28,000, 26, 28,000 HP and still have 5,400-ish, 5, 5,300-ish attack. So, and that's not trying. So if I have really great gear, we can definitely push in both directions uh, and get very high HP, very, very high attack so uh this will be interesting for senya uh we'll see how thick that barrier really is that's gonna be interesting uh dragon slayer strike awakened so they are now uh it's now going to strikes all enemies with a spear with a 100 percent chance to decrease hit chance for two turns with an 85 percent chance to provoke for one turn adopts a counter attacking stance for three turns Okay, so we're just basically adding the provoke to it. So now she can provoke off the S3. Uh, okay. That helps because you're trying to get Sen you're trying to get people to attack Senya, not ignore her. So I understand this. Um maybe we could have adjusted this to say instead of the counterattacking stance for two or for three turns, two turns and give it a 100% chance to provoke. Maybe we could have done that to just make you actually hit her or we could change the exclusive equipment, but we'll see what they end up doing. So Senya will be adjusted to eliminate uh, uncertainty of grace of the battlefield activation activation activated from her passive indomitable spirit will grant uh, fixed buffs to provide a uh, stable efficiency. In addition, she can use her skill indomitable spirit to counterattack more efficiently as her skill uh, dragon slayers strike will now have a chance to provoke enemies and provide a longer duration to the counter-attacking counter stance, which is cool. All right, in the line with the balance adjustments, her exclusive equipment option two and three will be adjusted as follows. So option two, they're now giving her a thicker barrier. This could be fun. Cool, I, I'm, I'm all for that. And then now it is uh, increased greater attack. So she's getting gab now for three turns when using Dragon Slayer's Strike. Okay. I'm curious to see how that goes. So the exclusive equipment, so that's just them saying that they're going to remain the same if you don't want anything. All right, next up, Great Chief Kawaii. Motivation. So uh, this is her passive. All they're doing here is they're making it more ef efficient is what I'm seeing here. So it increases critical hit chance by 30%. Um... And then, when an ally is attacked by a dual attack, increases by a dual attack, increases attack of the caster by 25%. Increase the attack, increased attack effect can stack up to three times. It's still 70%, I think. Yeah, it's still 70% or 75%. Yeah, 75% on both of them. 
but it is now just able to ramp up faster. So this is um, cool. That'll I actually think this will help a lot of you get into Katie's a little bit faster, ramped up, that you're not having to wait the five times for it to stack up. So cool. Um, I know a lot of you are probably like, but I want her to be more. Well, keep in mind what she is. She she has a very specific job. She is a Katie's unit. And that's what she says. Great Chief uh, Kawaii Kawana will undergo uh, changes to improve her usability in PvE content, such as Katie's Hunt. Here they go. They're spelling it out for you. If you want to know what her role is and her glorious purpose is, it's Katie's 13. Uh, she will be adjusted to increase the attack much faster. Of Each of her skills will now increase the attack stat with her passive uh, motivation. Accordingly, her... Uh, maximum can be stacked, will be adjusted to three, and increase the amount of attack will remain the same. All right, we're going to skip over Rickerus because nobody cares if you're using Rickerus and not Captain Rickerus. You're just Entink. Okay, Captain Rickerus is getting a legit rework. So everything we knew about him, throw it away. Let's see, is it enough? All right, decreases Debuff durations of all allies by two turns and attacks all enemies with a spear, uh, with spear art. With a 80% chance to inflict decreased speed and restrict for two turns. Okay. They're increasing uh, damage dealt, but they're also increasing the cooldown by uh, two turns. So it's now a five turn cooldown. So restrict is typically the main reason why you were using it was to restrict stuff, but... We'll see what they end up doing. They are changing his health rune to now increase attack by 15%. Uh, the mineral rune to now increase uh, hit chance by 10%. Uh, language rune is now giving him 5% attack. Uh, achievement rune is now uh, damage dealt by a uh, by quick pierce by 10%. Uh, wedge rune is now quick pierce, has a 100% chance to recover 5% of damage dealt. Um, Courage Rune is increases all of Supremacy Spear's effect chance by 20%. Oh, so it's 100% chance. Unless that's with that chance baked into it. So it's 100% chance to restrict, or it's an 80% chance to restrict. I don't know if they're telling you that now or if that is with it. I'm assuming it's already with it. That would be weird if they did. Uh, when the when using cheer has a 10% chance to extend the speed buff uh, duration uh, to three turns. Cool. And freeze rune at the start of the turn when the caster does not have a debuff has a 100% chance to grant attack for one turn. Okay, that's that's cool. Uh, Captain Icarus will now have uh, different skill effects so that he can be used more efficiently in aggressive attacker as an aggressive attacker in PvK uh, content such as Katie's 13. What do you know? They're telling you exactly what they want you to use him for. Uh, he will also have an adjusted uh, rune effects, which were difficult to utilize before the adjustments. Supreme Spear uh, will now decrease the debuff durations on allies for two turns instead of dispelling buffs from the enemies. And his stun is changed to decrease speed of the enemies as his debuff uh, probability and skill damage will be increased. His skill cooldown of uh, Supreme... Uh, spear will be adjusted to five turns. I'm not sure if that's going to be the best thing in the world, but they're trying at this point, which is cool. I, I at least give them credit for trying this because not a lot of people want to use this unit in Katie's. And also, it's quite annoying to have to build his specialty change. So, all right. I have no idea. I have never been able to say her name correct. So, we're just going to throw it out there that it's uh, probably not this, but it's Yoon Ryung, or however you say her name. I have no idea. Battle Cry, after she is awakened, will now raise the morale of all allies, granting increased attack and immunity for two turns, and decreasing debuff durations by one. So she's trying to get off some of those annoying turn one debuffs, and uh, she's now going to increase attack and uh, immunity for two turns. So, interesting. They're getting rid of the speed, and maybe this will help out. Um... I don't really know why people never really used her. Like, you just don't see people even trying to use her. I've seen a few people, like, bring it out for, like, just straight memes, but not actually, like, intentionally trying to build this unit. Sure, I get that it's a three-star unit, 
So people have a stigma about three-star units to begin with. It's also an ML three-star unit. So again, there's a stigma about, you know, getting to use those. But I'm curious to see if this will make her actually show up a little bit more. So let's see what happens. Uh, so Yoon Young skill battle cry will now grant attack to all allies, decrease debuff durations on allies for one turn instead of de you know, instead of increasing speed. With these adjustments, we expect her to be used more frequently in various PVE content. There you go. They're not saying they're expecting you to see this in PvP. In various PvE content, as she will have enhanced abilities to support allies. That gives you the idea. In various PvE. They are spelling it out. Okay. Arrowell, another unit you don't even know exists because you never see her used. Uh, let's see here. So, th Sword Thrust. Uh, attacks with a sword and shield with a 75% chance each to dispel two buffs. Okay. I guess it's each check. Okay. Damage dealt increased uh, proportional to the caster's max health. Their soul burn now has a 100% chance to dispel. Okay. Um, so they're doing a full rework on escort. At the start of the battle... And at the end of the turn, grants escort to the caster for one turn. Escort is super Arius from Peyra. After an ally, except for the caster, suffers a single target attack, increases combat readiness with the caster by 10%. So they're actually grant. They're now giving her Para's buff. Okay. All right. Yeah. And it originally was it grants a barrier to the ally of the lowest health for two turns. It starts turn a uh, barrier strength. Yeah. No, that's cool. But will that be enough? Who knows. Uh, attacks the enemy with a 100% chance. Let's see here. Nope, we only care about the awakened version. Attacks with a sword with a 100% chance to stun for one turn. Grants barrier to all allies for two turns. Damage dealt and barrier strength increase proportional to the caster's max health. And they're decreasing the attack scaling. And HP scaling is increased. Good. So they're making it to where it's more value there. And they're getting rid of the soul burn. Uh, decreases combat readiness of the caster and it can be soul burned. Okay, yeah, so uh, what is their, th their statements here? Arrowell will be adjusted to be more effective when equipped with health equipment. Her skill, Shield Thrust, will now have uh, improved dispel effect so that she can protect her allies more effectively. Well, depending on how well she's built will determine how cool this is if she actually, of how cool Escort ends up being. And uh, the Dispel each, again, at this point, they're not even trying to hide the fact that they don't care about uh, buffs anymore. So everything's going to strip. Everything's going to put buffs up. It's literally rock, paper, scissors on when your timing of your buffs come up. All right, so that's going to take care of the units. Now let's jump on in to the artifact balances. So, again, we're still short on the prayer beads here. And, uh, yeah, I'm watching you, Smilegate. You got eight weeks. Prayer beads. Next patch. Or are you just joking at this point? All right. So, Alinsinox Wrath. She's now... The artifact will now increase critical hit chance by 15%. And when activated... Uh, after activating an extra attack on the caster's turn, increases combat readiness by 10 to 20%. They're really trying to get you to put this on Alencia. They're really trying to get you to put this on Alencia for the CR push. Don't do it. <laughs> Rock her with something else. Have her do more damage with Draco Plate. Have her do <laughs> Symbol of Unity tech. I mean, I don't know. She's a warrior. There's like 100 warrior artifacts that are great. Now, cool. Could this work in certain situations? Sure. You know, here's the thing. I'd actually really be happy about this if we could counter and trigger both... Uh, the S1, S2 combo on Alencia. If you let that through, I'd probably be like all for this. I'd be all for this. Reduce the amount that it could actually uh, increase the combat readiness, but I think that would be cool if we could actually counter and get the S1, S2 combo. But again, we can't have any fun here with anything counter because they don't want it to be too oppressive to not be able to like uh, screw over the 
uh, cleave mentality players. All right. Double edge decrescent. Increased evasion by 20%. After evading, has a 15 to 30% chance to counterattack. What's up? Pay to win. Moonlight Dreamblade. How you doing? How you doing? What more do you need to know? What, what more do we need to know? The whales. Moonlight Dreamblade. How you doing? So, there you go. Enough said. Uh, Double Edge Crescent had limited, uh, n pff, limited, nobody used this, uh, as it could be triggered by a single attack, had a low uh, silence chance probability with the adjustments. The effect has been changed to increase evasion, grant counterattack chance, so thief heroes can use it more effectively. Uh, these are proposed balance adjustments, improvements that are scheduled for the update on August 4th. Wow, they are they rushing this or am I a week off? No, they're no, we got a full week. Okay, so it's two weeks. Good. I was gonna say, I'm kind of lost in time right now, so bear with me. Uh, and thank you for all this stuff. Okay, cool. So let's take follower only mode off. Uh, follower only mode is now off, and let's set a timer for five minutes at Nightingale one one seven six. I will be answering questions in the order they are received. Let's get started. So. That's a... Uh, that's a balance patch. I'm very glad that Euphine got delayed. And they didn't just drop her at the beginning of summer. Because they wouldn't have buffed her at that point. Um, but now at least you have the ability to see the buff before you can pull the unit. So... Politica, I have no idea. I don't see the unit enough to ever know if this is going to be good, so I'm going to be leaning on my friends who've had Faithful Lydica for a very long time and used to use it back when Lydica was the OP thing to have. Uh, it, it was this enough, because uh, she's uh, non-existent right now. Uh, is Holiday Euphine summon or nah? It depends on how you play, honestly. Because <laughs> it's, it's she's still the same unit. She still does the same job. Um, it will come down to, is she literally just... It comes down to, I think, how the evasion buff's going to work. And uh, the increased attack to all allies is now cool, so you can use her as a buffer. In a way, she's... I. Chat's going to hate me for this, but... Um... She's kind of like hand guy's like counter, but at the same time, she's also kind of like hand guy in a sense of she can get a couple debuffs off. So we'll see. Oh wait, no, she gets she dispels debuffs. Make sure I clear my statement up so people don't flame me for it. Yeah, she dispels debuffs. So being able to cleanse is cool. So, um, yeah, I'd probably still skip the crap out of this if, um, you don't have SSB and you're limited on, um, resources. This is going to be a niche fun unit. If you've got spare resources, she's going to be fun. But, uh, I think here's what's going to end up happening. Free-to-plays are going to need to summon for their SSBs. They're going to need to, um... Um, they're going to need to get the collab units and all that stuff. You can get hurt if, as long as they do a, um, as long as they do a, um, another custom group summon, you'll be fine. So, okay. Yeah, she's cool. Um, I'll try to build her and mess around with her because it's Holiday Euphine and I've been wanting to do this for a while, so I guess I will just go ahead and take the plunge and start working on figuring out a Holiday Euphine build. Especially now that we know she can increase attack, I can put her first before my other units so we can cleanse them, get some debuffs off of her. We'll have fun. We'll see what happens. 
So we've got, uh, if nobody's got any questions, we've only got a minute left here on this timer. So again, at Nightingale1176, if you have any questions, uh, we'll be answering them in the, in the order they are received. When the timer goes off, we'll do last call, hang out for a minute, and wrap up. So um, as far as everybody else, I see me not trying a single one of those other units. Uh, I've already got Katie's one shot, so Great Chief Kawaii's off the list. Uh, Rickerus, I would never, I have zero plans to ever do his specialty change. I find no value in him. Uh, Yoon is, um, she's got a cool look, but I would probably not build her. Just being honest, Aruel. Escort's cool, but I don't think it's worth me building the, um,. I don't think it's worth me building the unit. Or Valen, I would just... I, I don't need anything for PvE that revolves around him, so I'm not building him. And I don't have Faithful Slitticus, so... Basically, my only thing here is... Uh, um, Holiday Euphine is what we're going to attempt. Uh, as far as the uh, double edge, uh, we might... Uh, I've got a degenerate idea I might try out. We'll see how it goes. I've got a couple thieves that I could think of that this could be interesting on. And uh, why not? I mean, it's not like Moonlight Dreamblade doesn't already exist. But hey, so there it is. So, all right, last call, one minute. Uh, if you got any last questions, Nightingale1176, and we will wrap this video up. So again, YouTube, if you do have any questions that did not get answered because they had very little questions for you today, uh, make sure you uh, hit me up in the comments below and I will... Um, I will do my best to help you guys out. Um, so this will be again implemented on August 4th. So you have two weeks to start preparing. Um, chances are, here's how I see this. So you're going to have um, Charlotte next week. She's going to run for two weeks. There'll probably be an off week, most likely. And then Holiday Euphine will show up after that. And potentially SSB will be around that same time as well. So, um, you can already see on discords and stuff like that. I'm not going to go out and promote the whole thing and be like, Hey, here it is. But if you want to, there are places where leaky pipes, uh, happen to have some drips and you can go ahead and see everything for yourself on what summer Charlotte has to offer, including the Draco plate for nights. Um, so do keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, that's going to take care of it. Nobody else... Wait, hold up. Oh, we got one more. Um, so I will answer this question, then we'll wrap up. Uh, can you talk about who the extra attack proportion of Alencia not extract would benefit? Alencia. That's it. Shoe, potentially. Potentially shoe. Yeah, I can see shoe. Yeah. So, but yeah, pretty much it was designed to try to go on Alencia, but that's really what it was for. It was for Alencia. They tried to make it a worry. They like shove that down your throat to use that. Anyway, so let's go ahead and wrap up. Um, thank you guys so much for coming and hanging out on the balance adjustment preview. We will be back uh, in eight weeks with another balance adjustment preview and hopefully your favorite units and hopefully they don't do some absolutely stupid stuff. Uh, cause there's some units I'm very scared of that got voted for that I still have, we're dodging. So thankfully they haven't done that yet. Um, so, uh, again, if you have any questions, hit me up in the comments below. I'll do my best to give you guys the answers for that. And, uh, We'll see how it goes uh, in two weeks and how this actually practically plays out. Because, again, it may look cool on paper, but then once it actually gets in the game, it, it could be trash. So you guys take care, enjoy, and we'll see you in the next one.